What is up, YouTube? Nuisance Carl here, and uh, I want to talk about something. Uh, last time I went to the track with the E46, I actually had an issue with a uh, with cooling. The car actually, eh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say overheated, but it got a little bit hot, up to about uh, 117 degrees Celsius, uh, which is actually um, above the operating temperature of the E46. I think max you should go is like. 105 but anyways um that's a big no-no because given that the e46s and actually quite a bit of bmws have such a long engine the moment you apply a lot of heat to it it tends to warp and then you end up with an expensive head job so i'm gonna try to remedy that by doing a coolant flush i'm gonna flush the radiator using prestone's flush plus cleaner this should get rid of any of the residue, all the gunk uh, in the radiator, or actually the whole cooling system. So I'm going to run that for a little bit. I'm also going to flush the radiator multiple times. And in the end, I'm going to end up filling the radiator with distilled water and a bottle of water wetter. Why am I using distilled water and water wetter? Um, I don't want to use antifreeze because this is a track car. For track cars, uh, you generally want to do... Um, you know, just straight water, uh, mainly because antifreeze isn't really that easy to clean up in case of a spill or a crash, you know, safety, that kind of thing. Um, the reason I'm using water water though is because uh, what it's meant to do is it's supposed to uh, relieve the surface tension between the contact surfaces, uh, such as like the, you know, the water jackets and the radiator fins. Um, and theoretically that should provide a uh, better heat transfer. So, starting basis, uh, my car actually runs about two, 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 like 102 degrees Celsius, give or take, um, when driving around on the street or under a lot of views. So we're gonna see if that drops a little bit. I know that the water water actually has been claimed to reduce water temperature by around anywhere from like five degrees Fahrenheit to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to see if that does anything. Also, um, water water is only recommended with uh, straight water um, for anything like antifreeze. Um, usually it's not very effective. I think under five degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're going to use water water, only use it with distilled water. Got it? Let's get to it. I probably should have addressed this beforehand, um, but I actually have a problem flushing my radiator because, let me show you guys. As I take out the drain plug, <laughs> would you look at that? Nothing comes out. Let's see if I can get all that gunk out. Have a small screwdriver. Oh, I could feel that. Jesus. Look at that, though. It's gross. gross God look at that Oh oh I'm getting something So what's in my radiator? Holy shit! It's disgusting. Ugh. So I guess the lesson here, guys, is uh, sometimes when you stick things in places they don't belong your problems could be solved. So this is all the coolant I could get out at the moment. 
I'm not sure the actual the actual volume of fluid in here, but I know for a fact that this isn't everything in the coolant system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Prestone uh, Flush Plus Cleaner. I'm gonna run it through, fill it with distilled water, and then I'm gonna try to run it throughout the day. Uh, hopefully get rid of all that gunk or uh, loosen up all that gunk in there. And we're gonna do this all over again. Whoops. Gonna put everything in there. This shit better work. I just gotta fill it with distilled water. Forgot to mention, uh, when you're filling the coolant system, there should be a screw on that hole. Uh, make sure you take that out so you can properly bleed the system and you don't have air pockets. When you are filling the coolant system, uh, you want to put the key to position two, and you want to put the fan on low, but the heat all the way up. What this does is it opens the uh, the heater core. That way, you can actually clear out any air bubbles that might have occurred in there. I have my distilled water right here. I'm just gonna open this up. You're basically gonna fill it until nothing but water comes out of that uh, that bleed screw hole thingamajig. I can see the water kind of filling up right now, but let's see what happens. Uh, once you don't have any air bubbles coming out of there, then you can consider it done. There's air bubbles. No more air bubbles. It looks like there's just water. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stop right there. Now what you end up with is actually um, your expansion tank is actually overfilled. As you can see, um, there should be some play going around. There's actually a diagram right here of where it should be. Can't really focus on that because of the sun, but whatever. But it's overfilled, so I basically need to cap off that uh, bleeding port and then just use like a turkey baster to take everything out or take out all the excess water, sorry. So this is the second time flushing the radiator. Um, I put distilled water and pressed stone flush and cleaner. Let's see if it did anything. And it didn't do anything. Great. Yeah. All right, it did something. Would you look at that? It worked. Holy crap. All right, well, I'll let this drain out and then uh, we'll put some new stuff in there and then try to get this as clear as possible. So after the second flush, um, I'm actually gonna put another bottle and then fill it with more distilled water and we're gonna go from there white two bottles well i mean as you saw in the first flush um it was pretty bad like it was just there was a bunch of gunk in there so i want to clean it out as best as i can so two bottles Let's see if i can get this again and i got it i don't know why it was yellow huh that has me a little worried. Oh well. Just a reminder, I do have the heater on high with the fan low. That should allow water to pass into the heater core. All right, so after about five flushes and fills, uh, two of them with Prestone flushing cleaner and distilled water, and three of them with just plain distilled water, I think it's time to do the final fill. Uh, the only thing that I would mention is when you are doing the flushes, there is a drain bolt on the engine block right there. I would recommend doing it, but I didn't have the, I didn't have a long enough extension to do it. So I'm gonna just leave it as is, uh, no big deal. Just gonna be a little bit dirtier than uh, I would want, but 
let's get to it. I have the red line water water. It should drop the temperatures by a good amount. And it should only be used with distilled water. Hopefully I can get this first try. Full bottle. Alright, so I let the car sit for a little bit maybe like five minutes uh, to see if the temperature would shoot up uh, it hasn't shot up yet um, it still looks like it's uh, under normal conditions like it doesn't seem like any air bubbles so seems like we're good to go for a test drive all right guys so I'm going roughly six to five miles an hour in third gear 5,000 rpm trying to simulate um, you know track conditions without breaking the speed limit so 65 miles an hour I have the AC on kind of to introduce more stress into the car and I mean I am holding stable if this was a month ago I would be overheating and I'd probably be pulling over I'd probably have the heater on high to kind of release some of that heat but I mean would you look at that It is holding steady. I've been driving for about 20 minutes to get the car time to get to operating temperatures. I mean, but look at that, 95, not a problem. Car's holding up fine. I do want to mention that earlier, when I first started driving, uh, the, the temperature did shoot up a bit to 104. Um, that's probably because there was an air bubble in the system that I wasn't able to get out. But um, I turned the heater on to hopefully give it some time to, to you know, have the coolant or another coolant. I don't, I'm not running coolant right now. Um, so that the distilled water could fill up all those spaces. But yeah, turned out pretty good. Look at that 96. Not bad. Looks like a job done, guys. I actually want to add one more thing uh, before I finish up this video. Um, I did mention that the water temp did spike up uh, during my drive and I wanted to allow some time for the water to displace any of the air that was trapped in the system. Uh, with that being said, um, the water level actually might not be where it was in the beginning. Uh, actually, it probably won't be. It's probably going to be lower than normal. So um, what you want to do is when your car is completely cooled down, uh, not just cooled down a little bit, but completely cooled down, uh, you want to check the water level and add water accordingly or coolant whichever you are using one more thing actually um, I don't think I showed you guys this but um in order to get to that temperature gauge that I was showing you guys like it was the the top left on the screen um, let me show you so in order to get to that you want to hold this toggle Hold it down. Until that appears. You want to go all the way to 19. That's going to appear. And then you're going to want to go to 7. And that should bring up your water temp in SI units. So degrees Celsius. So. There's actually a full list of those, um, those hidden functions. They're called OBC hidden functions. I'll actually link that down in the description uh, so that you guys can go through it. You know, maybe you find something useful that you might need. But yeah, that should be it. Uh, let me know if you guys uh, did this flush too and let me know if that helped uh, bring your water temperature down. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.